All right, so unit three, nutrition, day six. So we spoke about cellular respiration. And yesterday we spoke a lot about photosynthesis. So how do these two processes work together? All right, so let's look at the do now. So the first question of the do now says, which statement best describes cellular respiration? So best describes cellular respiration. It occurs in animal cells, but not in plant cells. Well, that's not a terrible response, but do plant cells need to release energy? Yes, remember cellular respiration allows them to grow and expand and they need it for life processes. So yes, plants undergo both actually. It converts energy and food into a more usable form. Hmm, that looks like a pretty good answer. Let's read the rest. It uses carbon dioxide and produces oxygen. And we know that one of the reactants is oxygen and not carbon dioxide in cellular respiration. So it can't be that. And then D, it stores energy in food molecules. If anything, it does the opposite. It releases that energy in food molecules. So the answer is definitely B, converts energy from food into a more usable form. That's why you eat and that's why you breathe because you need glucose from food and you need oxygen from the air in order for this process to occur, your reactants. Number two, which process usually uses carbon dioxide molecules? So if it's using carbon dioxide molecules, it's a reactant. And which one uses that? Not cellular respiration. We never spoke about asexual reproduction. Haven't spoken about active transport yet. So the answer has to be D, autotrophic nutrition. This is just a fancy word for photosynthesis. Okay, the word autotrophic means that they make their own food. So an autotroph, autotroph equals organism that makes its own food, such as plants, glucose, right? So photosynthesis is autotrophic nutrition, all right? So answer for one is B, answer for two is D. Part A, write out the formulas of cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So let's see, you remember properly, cellular respiration has two reactants. And those two reactants are C6, H12, O6, plus O2. And that all together yields what's being released, which is CO2 plus H2O plus what we love, ATP, this is what our cells need, okay? Now in photosynthesis, right? So there's two reactants here, two reactants, but there's three products. Now in photosynthesis, we have CO2 plus H2O, which is water, plus our energy source, which is sunlight. So not ATP, but sunlight. And that's going to yield, that's going to yield glucose, which is C6H12O6 plus oxygen, which is O2. So again, three reactants, two products. So the stop and jot says, what do you notice about the reactants and products of each reaction? Well, if you look closely here, the reactants of cellular respiration are glucose and oxygen. 
The products of photosynthesis are glucose and oxygen. The products of cellular respiration are CO2, H2O, and ATP. And the, reaction, the, the reactants, the three reactants of photosynthesis are CO2, H2O, and sunlight. The only thing different between these two are the energy source. ATP is the energy source in C, um, cellular respiration, sunlight for photosynthesis. But if you look at them, they're literally opposite processes. They are opposite processes. All right, reactants for cellular respiration, I'm just putting CR, but that's cellular respiration, equals products of photosynthesis. Now describe the relationship between cellular respiration and photosynthesis. How do these two processes work together? All right, well, if you take a look here, you have cellular respiration, which releases CO2, right? This CO2 is going to be used in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis releases oxygen and through cellular respiration, it's going to use oxygen. So it's one continuous cycle. I hope you guys see that. Part B, food, matter, and energy. An apple is a type of food. It contains complex organic compounds. Its atoms are held together as molecules by chemical bonds that are rich in stored energy. When you eat an apple, you get both the matter and the energy you need to build the body to stay alive. The apple tree that produced the fruit represents the groups of organisms that are autotrophs, meaning self-feeding, right? So apple trees don't need to get up and go hunting to get food. They perform photosynthesis. They are autotrophs. The prefix auto, A-U-T-O, equals self. That's what it means. So think like automatic. Like other plants, the apple tree makes its own food, okay? Taking in the inorganic substances, inorganic, CO2 and H2O, and changing them into organic compounds, such as sugars and starches. Humans represent the other group of organisms, which are, I'd be impressed if anyone knew this, which are heterotrophs, meaning other feeders, since they cannot make their own food. Hetero means other slash different. So a heterotroph, they have to eat other organisms in order to obtain their nutrients. Autotrophs, they get to make their own nutrients, okay, by themselves. Humans and other animals must get their uh, complex organic compounds by eating other organisms. For the apple tree to combine inorganic raw materials of CO2 and H2O into organic compounds such as sugar and starch, it needs a source of energy. The rays of sunlight as they fall on the leaves of the apple tree provide energy. The process of making this food by using light as a source of energy is called photosynthesis, which you guys should know already. All green plants are photosynthetic autotrophs. Without plants to capture the energy of sunlight and convert it into chemical uh, forms that are edible, most animals will have no constant source of food and cannot exist. Okay, so part C, free response. By the way, if you break down the word photosynthesis, it breaks down into two, two words, photo and synthesis.
photo means light. And synthesis means to make. So you're making food using light energy. That's what photosynthesis translates to. Just an interesting tidbit. If this comes up again, this is how I know you'll watch this video, okay? Now, it says, base your answer to the following questions on the lake ecosystem represented below and on your knowledge of biology, okay? Now it says, uh, number one says, state one piece of evidence from the diagram that indicated that light penetrates to the bottom of the lake. Well, the word penetrate means to like push through something else, a barrier, okay? So how do we know that light actually um, penetrated to the bottom of the lake? So state one piece of evidence. Well, if you look closely at the bottom of the lake, you can see plants. And if plants are able to survive there, that means that they're able to capture sunlight in order to make food, right? So the presence of plants. Okay. Means that light penetrated to the bottom of the lake. Because if they're growing at the bottom of the lake, that means that there must be some light source there. And that comes from the sun. The equation for the process by which the duck in the picture obtains energy to swim. So first of all, is a duck a plant or an animal? It's an animal. So it undergoes a certain process in order to get the energy that it needs in order to swim. All right? That process, you should know, occurs in the mitochondria. That process is cellular respiration. But it said, ask for the equation. So let's give it to them. O2 plus C6, H12, O6, oxygen plus glucose yields carbon dioxide plus water plus ATP. Okay. State the equation for the process by which the plants in the picture obtain food, right? So the glucose that they obtain. You should know that is the process of photosynthesis. And we know that these are opposite processes. So they take in CO2 and water, and of course sunlight, and they yield glucose, and oxygen. Explain how carbohydrates provide energy for life functions. Well, the body takes in, right? The cell takes in carbs such as glucose and the mitochondria. releases energy from glucose for life functions. Okay, so make sure that you're studying this stuff. It's, I don't wanna say it's pretty easy, but it seems rather simple. Um, you do have an exit ticket. It's not here right now, but there is an exit ticket. So don't think you're off the hook. Make sure you complete. Make sure you complete. Okay. Exit ticket. Alrighty, everyone. I'll see you soon.